So this is a start to a series of videos over integrating Webpack, React, React Redux, Redux, Redux Thunk, and Django all together into something that actually works so that you can kind of get an end-to-end -end from starting with a basic project to having something running in React and Django together. It's a tall order, but we're going to go ahead and get started with the basics of Webpack. So again, we're going to start with the empty project. So we're in our folder and we have nothing in it. So we're just going to do an npm init. And then we're just going to go through the setup process that we have our package.json file. And if you look at the output, you know, it's something very basic. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and install Webpack and let it install all of its dependencies. So we do npm i save dev Webpack and we do the save dev so that it saves it is a development dependency inside of our package.json file. And this is going to install Webpack, which is kind of a big topic. We're not going to go into a lot of what Webpack does. We're not going to go into all the frills and, and things that it does. We're going to stick with the basics in this video. And it's just enough to get you to take your JavaScript that you're writing in specific folders and output it to a specific file, and then show you kind of the reason that we use Webpack over, say, Grunt or Gulp as we've done videos on Gulp in the past. I actually really like Webpack and a couple of the things that it gives us, and I think you'll see why definitely by the end of this series, but even by the end of this video. So now that we have our dependencies installed, we're ready to go ahead and move on and actually try to run our Webpack binary. To do that, we do a node modules, because when you do an npm install, it installs everything to the node modules folder in your root folder that you're in. Do dot bin, because it puts your binaries there and do webpack and so that's where the binary for webpack is when we hit enter it gives us the output that we want well trying to remember to run that all the time is kind of frustrating and annoying so we're going to go ahead and open up our package.json file and go down to scripts and add a build section to it and we're just going to do a command to our node modules bin webpack and so now in the future, we don't have to do that command all the time. We just need to do an npm run build. And so that runs, the npm run runs any of the scripts section that we have in our package.json file. So that we have that ready to go and we have our building going, we're actually ready to actually do something with Webpack. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a file called webpack.config.js. And this is where we're going to put all of our config for Webpack. And this is all just JavaScript. It's using Node. So anything you have available in Node, you have available in this. First, we're going to do an import. We're going to require our path, a uh, standard library thing, so that we can deal with paths in our config file. And we're going to create a variable called common. And it's just going to be a dictionary. And then finally, we're going to do a module.exports equals common. This way we're exporting the common variable that we instantiated, that we set up before, so that our system can actually use it. A lot of people do module.exports equals and then they do the dictionary. I don't know why I do it this way. I read it was a good way to do it and so I've always done it this way. I'm just gonna be honest. So with that, let's actually go ahead and fill in some of the stuff that we need for common. You need a couple of basic sections in every single Webpack config. The first one is your entry point. So we're going to do an entry key, and it's going to be a dictionary. And we're just going to do path, and then we're going to do set path.join, set it to underscore dir name, so that way it gets the current directory we're in, and then it's going to get the JS folder. So we're going to create a folder called JS in our existing directory, and then when we run Webpack, it's going to say, hey, I want to get everything inside that JS folder and do something with it. The next section that we want to do is we want to get the output so that we can actually put our output in a specific location. In this case, we're going to output the path to a build directory so that everything that we do just dumps into that build and then we can reference that build later. And then finally, we need to actually set the file name of that final package that we're going to have and we're going to set that to index.js. So in the future, when we reference the JavaScript files that we compile all together, it'll be index.js in this case. So now we get into a little more of the meat of our section. We're going to add a module section of our config. Now, there's other things that you can have, but these are the three basic things that you need in order for us to do our build. And then there's only one real section that we need inside of our module, and that's the loaders. 
The loader section is lists all of the things that you want to be able to do to your source code files. And it's basically going to take a, an array and it's going to take an array of fun objects. And so let's go ahead and add one for JavaScript and then I'll kind of explain what it does. Create an empty JSON object and we're going to do test for our first key. And this is going to test for file extensions or some kind of thing to do around a file name. In this case, we're saying, hey, grab all files that have .js at the end and do something with it. We're going to set the loaders for our JS files. And in this case, we're just going to leave it empty because we'll do something with it later. Here you would actually load the different loaders that you want Webpack to actually process the files with. But again, we'll deal with that in a, another video. Right now, we're worried about compiling down our source code and putting it to our output directory. And then finally, we're going to include, and then we're just going to say, hey, get everything in that JS folder. The reason we want to do this is we want to say, hey, go to this JS folder and do your stuff there, look in there. Because if you didn't, it would actually try to pull everything in your node modules folder, and it would just take a really long time to build everything. So really, that's it for our very basic Webpack configuration file. If you wanted to do like CSS or Stylus or SAS, coffee script, uh, all different types of files, you would just add a new loader for each type of file that you would want to do. So if you wanted to do coffee script, you would go to the next line, you do test equals, you know, then you do dot coffee, then you do a loader for coffee script, and then you would point it at the correct location for, you know, coffee script files. And then it would load all of those up and dump it out into the file name of index.js. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and actually try to do something with it. The first thing though we need to do is go ahead and create our directories that we just declared we were gonna have. So we'll do make dir of JS and build. So now when we add our J JavaScript files that we know where to put them and the system will put it in the correct location when it builds them. So we'll do npm run build it errors. Well that kind of sucks, we just went through all that work and now it doesn't do anything. I wanted to go ahead and show you this error because this actually took me a little bit of time and a frustration to figure out what's going on. This is actually looking for a JavaScript file, but it isn't looking for any JavaScript file. It's looking for an index.js file inside of that JS folder that we specified. I had main.js and a couple of other different default.js, a couple of other different file JavaScript file names, but not index.js. And this took me a while to track down that you need to name it index.js. So I will create a file called index.js and open it. Just do console log hello world. Do npm run build. We look, we have a successful run. It gives you a hash showing that it actually changed something. It gives your webpack version and then the amount of time it took to compile it. And then finally the size of the index.js file. It's actually a little bigger than you know the original file size because Webpack adds a few things in there to be able to do module loading code. But it all runs still exactly as you would expect. So we'll go ahead and do a node build index.js. It just gives us out hello world like we expected. So with that, we're kind of done with the absolute basics of Webpack. And it's actually not that complicated once you understand kind of a couple of things of what to do and some of the boilerplate that you need to go in. But I guess the real question at this point is why Webpack? Why, why use Webpack over a grunt? Well, there's a lot of reasons not to use it. One is familiarity. You could be familiar with another tool and you really like how it works. Um, but one of the big reasons I like it is it kind of integrates several different tools into one and it just kind of is all encompassing and it only pulls in the code in the libraries that you actually use. So you can have tons of libraries installed and the only thing that's going to get output at the end of the day is exactly what you need and nothing else. So let's go ahead and take a look at a demonstration of this. Let's go ahead and add a new file. We'll do vim.js to call it test.js. Add some code, do console.log. Let's do I am a test just to show that it works. And so now that we have that, let's go ahead and do our run command again. I note it builds everything correctly, and we're ready to actually try to run our code. If we do node build index.js, it only gives us hello world. It doesn't give us the I am a test that we just put in there. The reason it doesn't do that is because Webpack doesn't know that it needs to include and use that file. If we go back into our index.js file, 
and we'll do a require of our test.js file. Now it's going to say, hey, I need this file. I need you to use it. In this case, it's a really naive way to require a file. In a later video, we'll potentially go over the more proper way to require files. But for now, this is how we're going to do it so that we can tell, hey, Webpack, we need to use this file. So now we do an npm run build. And now if you look, it used index.js and test.js, so it included the file. So if we do our node and run our index.js file in our build directory, you see we have I am a test and hello world, kind of like we expected. So that's it. I mean, that's really all there is to a Webpack file. I know when I first started learning it, it was like, I saw all these grandiose examples of using Webpack and nothing really broke it down to its kind of very basics. But this is it broken down to the basics. You have a config file, you have your Webpack installed, you say, hey, look in this directory, output to this directory, and everything that's JavaScript, I want you to compile all together and put in this file. And that's it. I mean, from there you can get more complicated configurations and you can move on to how you need it to be. But this is kind of your basic entry level Webpack configuration file that I think you can use to get started in a lot of cases. Please join us on uh, gojango.com for the next video in our React series. And we're going to go over actually using Babel with Webpack to be able to set us up to use React and go ahead and use some of our ES6 stuff that's available to us. React is a lot simpler and easier to read whenever you can use some ES6 features. So we're going to go over that in our next video.